Hello everyone, welcome to our reflection on 1 Corinthians chapter 4. The fourth chapter brings to a conclusion the opening section of Paul's writing to the Corinthians, why he's felt he's needed to do that uh, and um, what he is hearing is going on within the church that causes him uh, concern. So he talks uh, primarily about what it means to be for him to be an apostle of Jesus Christ um, and how um, he and the other apostles should be regarded by those in the church and how they need to be aware of the reality of the situation that uh, he is in and that they are being put in by listening to those who are trying to uh, create destruction, disorder and chaos in the Corinthian church. He is not mincing his words, he's being very clear with them because of his love for them that they need to turn back towards Jesus and away from the factions that they are seeking to cause. Um, he recognizes that it is God who judges him, not anybody else. And so he is just being honest and wanting to be clear to them. He reminds them that it will be God who will bring to light those things that are hidden in darkness and will expose the motives of the heart he knows in his conscience before god that it is he is clear uh, that he is working for the sake of the gospel and he's concerned that those who are sowing discord in the corinthian church are not aware of this and are not living as though it's true we come to the uh, section where the Apostle Paul talks about, um, yes, what it means to be an apostle, what it means to follow faithfully in the difficulties of the settings in which they are in. He says, who makes you different from anyone else? What do you have that you did not receive? And if you did receive it, why do you boast as though you did not? In other words, there is a calling for a unity. There's a calling that we are in this together, whether it's Paul, whether it's Apollos, they're all working together for the same cause. And he goes into this section about his experiences and how it feels as though um, the Corinthian believers have uh, simply um, are simply reigning as though they're kings of their own kings and queens of their own destiny that uh, they are already reigning uh, and they're already rich and then he sees well then he says well look what those of us apostles uh, are going through. Um, we've been made a spectacle to the whole universe. We're fools for Christ, but you're so wise in Christ. We are weak, you're strong, you're honored, we are dishonored. Uh, we go hungry, thirsty, we're in rags, brutally treated, we're homeless. We work hard with our own hands. We bless when we are cursed. We endure persecution. We answer kindly when we are slandered. We've become the scum of the earth, the garbage of the world. So what is Paul saying here, really? What he's really saying is that they, the Corinthian believers need to be ready to stand up for their faith and to stand up for what is right, not to simply try and be as comfortable as possible. They're will be struggles there will be times when they need to stand with and alongside each other when things are difficult we can see in the situation in the world today the importance of christian brothers and sisters standing with each other 
to state that we are in this together and that we will support one another through it uh, in a godly way. Um, even though things come against us that are horrible and evil, that we will respond as though we are fools to Christ, for Christ, that though we are dishonoured, we know that God honours us and that in eternity we have the assurance of his love and his presence. When we are slandered, we are to answer kindly. When we're cursed, we need to bless. When we're persecuted, we endure it. The Apostle Paul is not trying to say that he's perfect. He's not trying to say uh, also that he wants everybody to be in a horrific situation like he's in. But he is saying that they need to be ready and willing to consider these things and not to simply be squabbling in their, sit, uh, in their little cliques that they're creating. There's something far bigger, something far more important going on. And we need to be in this together, not separating ourselves from one another. And so the Apostle Paul says, I urge you to imitate me in verse 16. He's not wanting to shame them, but he considers them his, his children, he says. It's a, a spiritual, this spiritual sense of, the church didn't exist. There wasn't really any that we know of followers of Jesus before the Apostle Paul came. He brought the gospel to Corinth. And so this church exists because of the fact that he brought the gospel to them and then Apollos watered it and so on. But they're in this position now where they are squabbling and he can see that those whom he loves, he considers them all his children, they are being separated and um, they're causing uh, dissensions among themselves at a time when they should be actively working together despite all that comes against them to bring the gospel to their communities. I urge you to imitate me. Sometimes people think that Paul is arrogant. That doesn't appear to me to be what is going on here. It's rather that because of his experiences of the past, because he knows now that Jesus is who he, who he says he is, Paul has 100% given himself to the task at hand of being an apostle. And so he feels that the awful things that are coming against him, he is responding to in the right way, in the way that God is calling him to do. And he is wanting these believers to do the same and to be equipped to do the same. If they're so worried about their internal squabbles, then how are they going to support each other? How are they going to actually cope with persecution from the outside? Draw yourselves together, imitate me, and do not give out evil for evil, but overcome evil with good. The Apostle Paul knows what it's like to be opposed. And he's saying, you need each other. Perhaps he's also saying, I need you to show that you are able to, to stand with me, to stand with one another in whatever comes against us. And so then that leads us finally then on to the penultimate verse, verse 20. Uh, the version I've got says, the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but of power. So much conversation going on in the Corinthian church, so much debating, so much trying to lead in one direction, that the word, that words were overtaking the reality of the power of God working in them and through them. Obviously, there was a very charismatic side to it, uh, with the Apostle Paul. With him came uh, incredible works of power, works of God, uh, healing and prophecy. These kind of things were uh, 
were clearly um, happening because God was using them uh, to reveal himself to these people for the first time. So there's that aspect of God's power, but there's something even, there's something uh, different about it as well. And that is that it is not simply words that will bring transformation. It's the working of the Holy Spirit. It's the power of the Holy Spirit living in us and working through us. Of course, Jesus, when he was alive on earth, he announced the presence of God's kingdom, demonstrating it with works of power. And Paul uh, was, as an apostle, was in a similar position as the Holy Spirit worked powerfully, as we've already said. God was at work in this culture in Corinth. But they needed to be aware that it was more than just their words. They're arguing amongst each other. They're talking. That was not bringing about anything on its own of uh, God. It was, it's that the words for them to be true witnesses, for them to be uh, working missionally in Corinth. It was not just their words that were important, but it was also the fact that it was God who was going to be at work. And it's similar for us today. We who follow Jesus, we're called to be his witnesses, to tell others what he's done for us. But this me message can't be persuasive on its own unless... It's backed up by evidence of God's power. If people see that God is at work in us and is at work through us, if they sense that he is clearly here, uh, present in our compassion, in our prayers, in our churches, then people will be open to hear what we have to say about Jesus. It's not just about the words. We need to live out what it means to be Christians, to live out what it means to be influenced by the Holy Spirit. The kingdom of God is not just a lot of talk. It's living by God's power and then um, reflecting and revealing that to people around us. Now, what that looks like in the different situations and contexts that we're in is something for us all to engage with, to think about, and to answer, come to an answer before God and under God. But as we consider the fact that we long to see people becoming Christians around us, we need to remember that our words are important, but alongside our words, needs to be a demonstration of the fact that the Holy Spirit is at work in us, molding us, changing us, and um, equipping us to pray and to love and to um, be who God calls us to be. We need to pray for a demonstration of the Spirit's power in our lives first and foremost, and then in the situations that surround us. And then as people realize uh, who it is that we live for, why we live for him, and how we live for him, then they will surely, we are promised, uh, join with us in seeking to know and love the Lord Jesus Christ. The kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but of power. Let's pray for a moment, shall we, as we draw to a close. Lord God, thank you that um, the words of the Apostle Paul to the Corinthian believers uh, mean so much to us, uh, just as they did to those original receivers of this letter. Lord, would you help us to be united together to stand with one another uh, in what we face as Christians, that we will be united, uh, that we will face whatever comes against us 
with goodness and love and gospel truth. Lord, we pray that we would imitate um, the apostles in the way that they so faithfully followed you to sometimes horrific situations. And yet, because of their faithfulness to you, they went. Help us to imitate them. And Lord, may it be that in our lives, we see you at work by your Holy Spirit, that as we proclaim the gospel in our words, it may be evident through the way that we live and through the way that the Holy Spirit works in us. May people see you through us and therefore respond to the gospel. We ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God bless you all. See you in a few days for a reflection on chapter 5 of 1 Corinthians.